after Mashiach comes, that everyone will, that, that there will be prophecy will be abundant for everyone. Similarly, we know the famous pasuk with which the Rambam finishes his, uh, his sefer that the world will be filled with the knowledge of Hashem, like water covers the sea. So there's an Udrashim that explains the word Das as Hashem, no longer today as Hashem. Knowledge of Hashem also refers to Ruach HaKodesh. It doesn't just mean intellectual knowledge. It also means that there will be a revelation of supernatural wisdom. In other words, prophecy, divine spirit that will enhance the people's awareness of Hashem. And this week, in Shaftim Nunalaf, the Rebbe spoke a lot about the return of prophecy. I want to discuss, there's three main points I want to discuss. I'll try to do it in short. They, they uh, Obviously, it's uh, in, a, in a half hour, I can't cover everything. But the three main points I want to discuss a little bit, what is the purpose and role of prophecy in Yiddishkeit in general? What is the purpose and role of having prophets, having a Navi? Second point is the idea of the return of prophecy before Mashiach comes. It's an interesting thing that Rambam writes that even before Mashiach comes, we'll have the return of prophecy. And this is one of the haktoma, you see, one of the things that will, that, that, will, that will herald the coming of Mashiach. The Rambam actually gives a date. We'll discuss some, a little bit about this a little bit later. The third point, which I don't, have a, I don't know if I'll have a chance to really discuss in depth, is the level of prophecy that will be in Yemaisa Mashiach. After Mashiach comes, the type of prophecy that will be then. So let's discuss, first of all, the first thing. First of all, the role of prophecy and prophecy in Yiddish Guide. Where, where does that fall in? From a very, very superficial level, why is, what's, why is it so... The Rambam lists in his 13 principles of faith, the 7th and 8th principle regard prophecy. The 7th principle is to believe that there are certain people that because of their intelligence and their emotional capacities are fully developed, they are able to receive communication from the Epishter, prophecy in general. The 8th principle is the principle of belief in the prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu, which Moshe Rabbeinu's prophecy was on a much higher level than everyone else's prophecy. The Rambam lists their four main things. First of all, Moshe Rabbeinu's prophecy was not, so to say, was directly from the Abishad himself. It didn't go through the medium of the angels. His prophecy was without any metaphors. Most prophets only saw their prophecies and through a mushal. They didn't see things 100% clear. Things were said in the way of a metaphor, and they understood the meaning of the, the, meaning of the metaphor. But Moshe Rabbeinu received this prophecy Fisha, who was clear from the onset what the message was, wasn't enclosed in any garments and any, any metaphors. Next point is that Moshe Rabbeinu, all prophets, when they used to receive prophecy, they used to go into some type of trance. They used to lose the capacity to, you know, the body can function as normal. They would like become like Meshuga, so to say. They would leave behind the regular... <laughs> you know, mental capacity, and they used to get connected with something higher, and they used to shake and quiver, fall into whatever it is, different descriptions we have in the Nevi'im. But Moshe Rabbeinu, when he received this prophecy, was like one friend speaking to another friend. He didn't, his body was able to contain that revelation of godliness the way it is. And the fourth point is that his prophecy came whenever he wanted to. Well, all other prophets, they weren't promised to get prophecy whenever they wanted. Moshe Rabbeinu did. So anyway, Moshe Rabbeinu's prophecy is of a totally different nature. And the eighth principle of the Rambam's 13th principle is the belief in the prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu. So on the order of the principles of the Rambam, the, I'm pointing this out for a reason, is that the first five, first six principles are principles of faith regarding the Ebeshter himself. To believe in the Ebeshter, that the Ebeshter is one, the Ebeshter doesn't have any physical body, you know, any things like that. You have to serve the Ebeshter, whatever it might be. Right after the principles of belief in the Abish, there comes the belief in prophecy in general and the prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu in particular. Then the Rambam goes on to the next set of principles are regarding that Torah is from heaven. Torah is Minash and that there won't be any addition or change in Torah. Then the Rambam moves on to reward and punishment, Ashkach, the Abish sees whatever everyone does, and the reward and punishment, Mashiach, Chiyas HaMesim. So the Rambam lists the idea of prophecy as a crucial part of Yiddishkeit. It's, it's not just that it's a nice added feature, you know, that we have Torah and we have mitzvahs and the and reward and punishment. And you should also know there's prophets as well. 
But the prophecy is an integral part of the belief in Yiddishkeit. In other words, it's from the fundamentals of the belief in Yiddishkeit. Yeah, and the <coughs> Ram. Huh? It's not for the Seder. You'll soon see why I mentioned the Seder. <coughs> the Ramah most specifies this in his Yada Chazok, in his famous Sefer of the Rambam, in the beginning, Hilchus Seder Yatera, Perek Shin, chapter 7, he says, Miyusayde Hadas, on the fundamentals of Yiddishkeit, lay the Shokel Manabis Meyadam, to know that the Abisha gives prophecy to people. Now, on a very simple level, we understand that the reason why prophecy is very important is because. In order, part of, I mean, the whole basis of Yiddishkeit is that Torah is min Hashemayim, Torah is from heaven. If one doesn't believe in prophecy in general, which means, obviously, if he doesn't believe that there's a concept of prophecy, he definitely wouldn't believe in the concept of the Moshe Rabbeinu's prophecy, for, you know, he definitely wouldn't believe in that. So if you don't believe that there's communication between the Ebishter and mankind, you don't believe in the whole concept of Torah. Because the whole idea of Torah is based on the fact that there's a communication between the Ebishter and the world. But the Ebishter, you know, gives... <coughs> You know, he, he, he gives over knowledge to, to the prophets to teach people what to do. So on a very simple understanding, we understand that prophecy is a very integral part in the belief of Yiddishkeit. Without the belief in prophecy, you wouldn't believe in Torah. What the Rebbe says, it seems from the Rambam, there's something much more than that. Because if the whole belief in prophecy would just be in order that we should be able to believe in Torah, so if so, the... the, the, the First of all, the Rebbe says a few things. First of all, the principles of belief and prophecy should be, after the Ramam says you have to believe in Torah, so as a supplement to that, he should also mention the fact that you have to believe in prophecy. Because the reason why prophecy is so important is because that is the foundation of why of our belief that Torah is from heaven. But it's all really needed in order to believe in Torah, that Torah is from heaven. So the belief in prophecy will be mentioned later. Second of all, there's a lot of details, not so many, that Rambam actually writes, interestingly enough, that were I to explain the uniqueness of the prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu, as I would have to start explaining in many introductions, even the Rambam says, I'll do the Kaklas Akits, I'll do it you know, as, as, as short as possible, it'll take at least 100 pages, Rambam writes. He's not even going to attempt, at least in, in, in the Pirish and Mishnai, the Sanhedrin, where he discusses the 13 principles of faith, he doesn't even attempt to explain the deep, you know, how exactly prophecy works. Murder Nebuchim, a little bit he does. So the Rambam gives, but there are a few details the Rambam does mention. He explains the uniqueness of the prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu. And a little bit, even in a few short sentences, one short sentence, what, what, what a prophet is. Someone that is intelligence, is, 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 you know, complete, and he, you know, he's a type of person that he, you know, completely has control the Rambam also discusses in Nechusei Yatari, discusses the qualities of a prophet. He has complete control over his instincts and v'chulu v'chulu, such and such. So from the fact that the Rambam does add details, if his prophecy is just the only the re- only reason why prophecy is so important, so integral to Yiddishkeit is because it, it sustains, helps us, us believe in Taita, the Taita from heaven. It's not wouldn't be so important to know all these details. So the Rebbe says a very fundamental point. Belief in prophecy in of itself is very fundamental to Yiddishkeit. Why? Because the idea of prophecy basically means that the Abishter has connection to this world. When you believe in the Abishter and the, how the Abishter created the world and everything, the belief in prophecy is part of the belief in the, so to say, in the Ach, I don't know exactly, the Ach is Hashem, the unity of Hashem, but the belief in the Abishter's connection to this world. The Abishter runs this world. And the Ebishter, and, and the Ebishter reveals, com- communicates messages to people in this world. But that's, that's a very integral part of, of a belief in the Ebishter. Not just the Ebishter created the world and some ways up there and so on and so forth. But the fact that this causes that the, 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 the idea that the Ebishter is manifest within the world. Why does that have to be different from the being? So, therefore, therefore... The Rebbe's is, therefore, it's important to understand how prophecy works. As if prophecy would just be a guy had a dream and somebody reads him a telegram and he wakes up and he says, this is what I received. So if so comes out that the, is, the, the communication is in a very remote way. By Rambam explaining how prophecy works, that the das of the Navi, that the Rambam explains how a Navi would, so to say, would go into a trance and his physical, his, his, he wouldn't realize what's going on in the physical his senses around him, and his mind would remain, so to say, detached from you know the immediate surroundings to be able 
to understand and contain the communication, the vision he was getting from above, the Ramam is highlighting the fact how the Das Ha'odam, the intellect of man, became a proper vessel for godliness. How the Epishter unites with the Das, with the, with the intellect of man. The ultimate level of that is the prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu. That's also why the prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu is so important in Yiddish guy. And all the details of why the prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu is so unique, which basically means that Moshe Rabbeinu, the ultimate communication of the Epishter, he didn't, his body didn't get, you know, his body was able to contain it, was able to understand godliness in the purest form that even Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't, you know, certain levels he couldn't reach. He said he can't see my essence, but the communication was on the highest level that any Navi could attain, this all this all is integral to the realization, to the understanding that the Ebeshter connects to this world. The Ebeshter reveals his presence or his information in this world in a way that it becomes one with the world. And by Moshe Rabbeinu was in the most complete and comprehensive way that his physical intellect and his physical body was able to become one. He didn't have to lose himself, he didn't have to have any metaphors. This is, this is part of understanding the fundamentals of Yiddishkeit, of understanding that the Epishter communicates and you know has a direct line with this world. So in other words, the role the, the role of prophecy in general is, is 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 not just the fact, you know, that in other words, it's not just the effect of prophecy. It's not just that there's a prophet so the Navi could tell us things that we should do or we shouldn't do. But the, just the, the actual idea of prophecy itself is a very, very important point, because the actual idea of prophecy shows how the Epishter reveals himself in this world. So not everyone is able to be a prophet, as Ramam goes on, there's certain qualities a person has to have, and even if he has that qualities, Ramam says he's not necessarily assured that he will get the prophecy. But the, the, the concept of prophecy in of itself is a very fundamental point, Tidishkeit in general. And obviously, you know, Prophecy also is very integral to understanding the traders from heaven and the belief that, you know, whatever Navi tells us, we have to listen to and so on and so forth. So this is the role of, this is the importance of prophecy in, in Yiddishkeit in general. And it also explains a certain sense why we make such a big deal about the fact that when Mashiach will come, we'll be the return of prophecy. It's a very nice thing to have prophets. You may know, want to know what uh, which lottery ticket to buy, what a prophet. You can tell you the lucky numbers, the place and shmos. Uh, all things, that's what they use. Prophets they used to. Somebody will look in Tanakh. The prophets were used primarily in some cases for physical things. Somebody lost Sholem, lost donkeys. Donkeys were lost. He went to Shmuel and to find out where the donkeys are. And similar stories. So, Asenes, Asenes, female donkeys. So, the, 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 you know, it's very good to have prophets, you know, they, 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 but the idea of prophecy really shows on the fact that there's Ashra Sashchina, that there's a Debishter, so to say, manifesting himself in this world. There's a revelation of Debishter in this world. The fact that now prophecy is not as strong as it was during the time of the Beis Hamikdash is because right now the, the world is not the proper Kali for that type of communication. So when Mashiach will come, even before Mashiach will come, as we'll discuss, it's already something that already started. If we are told that prophecy will return, it's not just that then we will know deeper things through prophecy, but the Nikuda, the, the, the point over here is just the actual fact that it will be prophecy in such a great way means that the Abish will become manifest with the world in, 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 you know, in a very open way, more than ever before. It says that the Beis Hamikdash was destroyed. Yeah, yeah. That's what it said. Yeah. Who was the Achim Rabin? I'll get to that soon if I have time. Now, I just will add one more Nikud. This is really the, the, the last point I wanted to discuss, which is that when Mashiach will come, it says in general, prophets have different prerequisites that they need to, you know, they need to be smart and humble and uh, the number of conditions for prophecy. When Mashiach will come, there won't be any need for any conditions, because then it says, Now prophecy, so to say, the fact that should communicate to this world is a chiddush. The world itself doesn't feel godliness. Yeah, the world itself doesn't feel godliness. Just that there's, the person could, so to say, elevate himself, refine himself, make himself a proper vessel for divine communication, so he becomes a vessel for divine communication. 
Mashiach will come, you won't need to refine yourself. The world as it is will become one with Abishta. So prophecy will be to all. Everyone will be prophesying. You won't need to have all these conditions that are generally laid out, which I didn't mention. But Amram, you look, you mentioned the certain conditions and oh, you have to meditate and does it's a whole thing to reach the level of prophecy. Even at the time the people were able to become prophets. It wasn't an automatic thing. So because when Mashiach will come, godliness will be revealed within this world in the way of pshitas and simplicity, the same way physical things are real to us, godliness will be re- real to us. So prophecy will be on a totally higher level than it was before. Why would it be real? So, now, Adrab, if so, that brings out, when we say lost love, it will be prophecy, it means it will be given by the cross, that there won't be... Uh... The truth is that there's different periods and there's different... I, I, I'm probably not going to have time to get into that. Okay, this is just in general the idea of understanding the purpose, the, 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 the role of prophecy in general. But now, the next thing is also understand what is what, what was the purpose of having a prophet. Good, so this idea of the Abishai community is what were prophets used for? So the Ramam also discusses this in Hilchas to say the Atayda, and the Ramam explains there's there's a number of of, of, of points, but the, a few some of the main the, I would maybe one way of putting it is into two in, in two separate points. One thing is prophecy of not being a prophet is through his prophecy he'll be able to attain better understanding of the Eibushta than he could without the use of prophecy. Certain things that human intellect can't understand. Or even if they could understand, it might have taken years and years of, you know, understanding and calculation until we reach a certain point. Through prophecy, he's able to attain, he's able to be machiv daite, believer, he's able to attain better understanding of godliness than he could without his wisdom. Uh, for, uh, more than his wisdom could attain on its own. Prophecy is also, again, the idea of prophecy is a very broad concept. Chassidah speaks a lot about it, the Ramah speaks a lot about it. But prophecy is, as the Alter Rebbe writes in the time of Geras that they saw whatever level they were. They didn't just know about what they were on. They, prophecy was an actual revelation when, when there was a when there was a there was a revelation of godliness that they actually were able to be that asaga samuhus. They saw the thing the way it is. So this is the idea of prophecy that it's it's, it's it, the Ramamites, most prophets didn't necessarily give any of that guidance to others. It was for themselves to have a better understanding of godliness. Second of all, the other the more practical aspect of, of prophets, which is what uh, you know, what we know a lot about is that they would do miracles. They would tell people, go to war, don't go to war, do this, don't do that, right? Like all the stories in Tanakh with Elio and Alicia and so on and so forth. So they would give guidance as people didn't. They wonder, should I go into this business? Should I go into this business? Should I move here? Shouldn't I move there? All, all eights is Gashmin. They used to ask by the view, by prophets. So this, in a certain sense, reflects the idea of godliness not just being they should communicate not just for remote spiritual things, but for you see here also very clearly the, the unity of the Abishta and the physical needs of a person. Should I do this? Should I do this? No, they should gave directives to the Navi what the person should do or shouldn't do. So there's a directives of the Navi for, you know, what should I what I should do, what I shouldn't do, you know. Now the role of a Navi was in a certain sense, because he had th- these divine capabilities of you know, being able to understand and perceive godliness and tell people what to do or not to do, the role of the Navi, or, or the main of him that we know about, was in a certain sense a spiritual leader. What did they do? Read Yishayo and Yumiyohu and thus. What, what was their role? Their role was to go and tell people, as the Ramam says, the role of the Navi in a certain sense was to tell the people that they have to serve the Ebrishter, that if they're not going to listen to the Ebrishter, this is going to happen. If they will listen to the Ebrishter, good things will happen. The role of the Navi was somewhat of a spiritual guide, you know, he was the one that communicated the word of Hashem to the people. He, he couldn't make new mitzvahs. You know, Taylor and mitzvahs, only Moshe Rabbeinu gave. And Nabi didn't have a right to add any new halacha after Moshe, after the prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu. But the purpose of the Nabi was as a spiritual guide, was a communication with Abisha. Abisha wants you guys to become better, and this is what's going to happen. Rukhul, rukhul. So that was, again, it was the role of the Navi was of a, 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 again, just tying it into what I discussed before, the role of the Navi in a certain sense was a someone that communicated what they wish to want from you in the here and now, and where you are. Like you want to know what to do and what not to do, and you go to a Navi, you want to know, yes, particularly what they wish to want from you, what, what they, if they wish is happy with the state of the Jewish people or not. To send a bee, to tell the people, you know. Most was Teichacher. Most things yeah. we know. Of yeah, I guess if there was no need for Teichacher, there wouldn't be a need for the Nevoah. 
I mean, the Nevoah that's written down, the Nevoah Shemus Chumash, he was more prophets, it says, of 600,000 Nevoah. And how many prophets are written down? Of 48. The only Nevoah that was needed for future generations. And the Nevoah that they said was a contraction. Yeah, well, they said much more. What was needed for, for us was written on a, a lot of prophecies. We're in the Chomus, in the Deen, Shalav, Yichel, Yagev, Chazak, Yenech, Yen, Beloch. Look in Rashi, in Pasha Sazim, he explains that the Navi could tell you the negative things that will happen and the good things that will happen. If they ever wanted wa- wanted to know. But those things are not revealed so much in the history. In the Ishayo, a lot of Nevoahs are good Nevoahs. So it was good and bad. Whatever, they do different messages, you know. Like a father teaches his son, you know. If you do this. But it never but, says what you say. It says that even at Eved, even with Eved, God filled the Eved from the stuff as Eved. That's what it says. Also, the Chomet, most of it is straight to the But you know, the Chomet is also encouraging to... to, 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 to fine, to, to, fine, Chol Eifin. Now, now, the, the, this next, next point I wanted to discuss, I guess I don't think I'll be able to go to the third point, the return of prophecy. The Gemara says that when the, the, the when the base of English was destroyed, the Nevoah stopped. The last three prophets that we know of the Chagas Chayim Malachi, they were at the beginning of the second base Hamikdash, and the last prophet Malachi finishes off the pasuk, his last famous pasuk, Kinu Yisraelech Lo, the second last pasuk, and when to send you a Leo Anavi before the awesome, great, and awesome day of David, I'll send you a Leo Anavi. So the, so the, the number of Rishonim, the Smag, the Rekech, they write, what he's trying to say is, he's saying that now I'm the last prophet, for me and I, there won't be any prophecy, but you should know that at the end of days, before Mashiach comes, whatever exactly it will be, David is going to once again send the prophet to prepare the evening for Mashiach. Now, the Rebbe spoke about this a few times. The Rebbe very strongly explained that it doesn't mean, on Sun Si also, with the Rambamites and other places, the Rambam also, before, the Rambam does write in a few places that, that prophecy will return on Mashiach will come. But the Rambam writes that in general, it doesn't mean that there's no prophecy at all after the Beis Hamidish was destroyed. And the Rambam goes, you look, you put the Sikhs here, look, you're in the Pasha Shaitan, I think, you know? Whatever, and in the mouth of Shaitan, in the mouth, the Rambam discussed, I don't want to go, it's not, I can have time to go to the modern famous. The Rebbe brings different proofs that the idea of prophecy still remains now. At least, the way the Rebbe says that even if you're going to, even though there's certain sources which seem to imply that the return of pro- that the prophecy seems, maybe it's a higher level of prophecy. There's definitely low, lower level of prophecy is still shy of, even after the Islamic Israel destroyed, it's just not so, it's, it's not so found as it was during the time of the Islamic Israel. Why is prophecy now? And the Rebbe explains, it's not Pshat and Mitzad, the Abish, the, the communication from above stopped. It just is no Kalim down there. Our, our line is disconnected. It's, we're not a vessel for it. But I'll put everybody's connection to the Tehra Pashas Mitzad. But Abish is, the Shadal Sash Nebu is there. Just from us, we're not proper vessels. Why aren't we proper vessels? So, uh, some simple answers. Rama Mayas who made a Nebu, a Navi, a Nebu, could only come in a state of happiness. In time of all this, who's happy, not able to receive prophecy. Um, other, other, other of the daily Israel explain the prophecy is only shy when the other is in, in its place, the Beis Amikdash. So, you know, the Beis Amikdash and the other is the source of divine communication for the world. Once that was hidden, the Beis Amikdash was destroyed, prophecy is limited, to whatever, it's not the way it was before, etc., etc., etc. There's a lot of discussion of uh, why, you know, what it means the prophecy was taken away, but definitely there, there are lower levels of prophecy. Which, which are, the Rebbe's Rappa, the point is that it's still included in the general term of Nevoah, despite the fact that if you look in different sources, and there's, there's Nevoah and the Rokha Kodesh and the Baskel and the Dream, there's many different levels here which, I, I, my, which I'm not the biggest, uh, definitely don't have prophecy myself, so I can't really tell you much about it. But if you look in the sources, all discussions, different things, but the Rebbe says, the Rebbe does accept the fact that it's Shaykh, that from certain sources it seems a certain level of prophecy that's not Shaykh now, but the Rebbe says it doesn't mean that prophecy in general means, and it's, and it's, you know, even in the lower form is not Shaykh now. Stam Lahoy, it's an interesting thing, the Rebbe doesn't bring it down, but you have the Maggid of Mezrich said this, and the Maim Ali Malach mentions, and a few other of the Talmudian Maggid mentions, they say that Bismana Golos is easier to get through a Chakredish than Bismana Bayis. Why? They bring a marshal of a king, and the king is in his palace, and the king is in his palace, who could go into the king? But when the king, let's say the king is on the road, 
and he's 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 not in his house, and so anyone that has some clean enough house that the king feels comfortable to go in, he'll go there. So Adarak says, similarly in time today, Samit uh, the king was in his palace, so to go into the king, the king can't, if you want to invite the king to come to your house, you have to build a nice palace and really convince the king that, just, that your palace is deserving a visit. Which means that a person had to be on a level that he could be married, that Abisha should come to him to reveal himself to him. But now in the time of the Beis Amikdash, because now in the time of the Golos, since the Shekhinah is also in Golos, so wherever the Shekhinah finds a person that's pure, that's clean, so he'll go there, he'll reveal himself to him. So it, it's interesting uh, how to connect it, how to, how to, how to reconcile with other, uh, the, well, the Chacham to say the prophecy stopped, it was taken away, the separate question, but it's an interesting thing that in a certain sense, in other places it actually explains quite the opposite, the Bishman Golos, a shaykh that there should be proper the ruach hakodesh at least whatever you want to call it more than it was in time of the base hamikdash. But what I wanted to point out is that what, what the, the, the Rambam writes in his in his he in his Gattis Taman his famous letter of Taman the Rambam writes that he has a tradition from all the way back in his family that before Mashiach comes will be the return of prophecy. Quotes, uh, he has a whole chesh, which I don't want to go into based on the prophecy of Bilam. There will come a time, the prophecy will return. And his chesh comes out and will return in the year Tav Tav Kuf Ayin Vav, which is 4,976. And the Rambam says there's no doubt that the return of prophecy will be the leading to the coming of Mashiach. People ask, but Mashiach didn't come then. The Rabbi writes, but they say this Chalik Beis, the Rabbi writes, other things mixed in, which held back Mashiach's coming. But we do find that at that time, there was a resurgence of prophecy. You have the Rebbe writes, different, you have the Rekeach, the Yudha Chasid, the number of daily Israel that were known for their prophetic capabilities, so their ability to foretell the, foretell the future and to reveal secrets of the Torah and so on and so forth. The Rebbe says, furthermore, that the revelation of Darizal, the revelation of the Baal Shem Tev and, and the, and the Rebbein, which there also you see two fundamental themes that that Rizal and Rabbein brought with them. One is the deep revelation of understanding of the Eibushter, which in a certain sense is also connected to Nevoa, but you know, it's divine wisdom which can't be revealed. You can't test it in a laboratory. It's coming from a higher source. And together with that, because of the great connection with Eibushter, they're able to tell people what to do in the physical means. People used to sit them with acid up to do here, to do there. So this was an outcome of a, of a great revelation of godliness that they had. So the Rebbe says, this is all part of what the Rambam is writing, that before Mashiach comes, will be the return of prophecy. What is the point of this return of prophecy before Mashiach comes? So the Rebbe writes, the Rebbe in Shaykh and Nunalaf, and other places, and it's explained, that the point is that everything that we know, we have to have a preparation for Mashiach. So first of all, the preparation for the prophecy of Mashiach the prophecy that Mashiach himself will have, will be in the days of Mashiach, comes through the return of prophecy that we have before, that we have now before Mashiach comes. But there's another point that the Ramach discusses, the Zayar says, the Chodesh says that Eliyahu Navi will come, says he'll be, be the one, he'll be the first one that will come before all the prophets, before Mashiach comes. And the Zayar says there are some people who will reveal yourself with your soul, with your neshama, in, in the way of neshama, in the way of wisdom, face to face. The point is, as explained a number of sources, Elio Anavi, right, we all heard about Gili Elio, revelation of Elio Anavi. But a revelation of Elio Anavi doesn't necessarily mean that you see a guy that is Elio Anavi. In many sources it's explained, you have Hamid Echachamim that they found that there were certain secrets of the Torah that became known to them all of a sudden. They were able to understand Torah, they didn't know how this idea came to their head. That was Elio Anavi. Eliyahu Novi was revealing them in their head, putting things in their head. They didn't see him, they didn't know he was around, but the revelation of prophecy of Eliyahu Novi that he was communicating to people was sometimes not felt in a revealed way, it was felt through their neshama, through their intellect. Very high individuals merited to actually see Eliyahu face to face and learn from him. So the Ramak writes that the reason why you're going to have this preparation is if Mashiach comes, and we're not, I mean, really the Ramam says this word, you have to have a Novi prepare the Jews for Mashiach. Mashiach comes with a great revelation of God and it's not ready for it. It's not going to be very good. So you have, as a preparation for Mashiach comes, this divine knowledge that's revealed, this prophecy that's coming to the world. 
in order to slowly whatever, you go through a whole thing, different levels of prophecy, one will lead, lead to the next, more revealed levels, more revealed levels. It's all to prepare the world for Mashiach. So the idea of the return of prophecy, so to say, is meant to prepare the people. And this is what the Rebbe says also, the reason why there was the revelation of Chassidus, of that is on Chassidus, this was all a taste of Mashiach to prepare us for Mashiach. We shouldn't just all of a sudden one day go from one extreme to other extreme, not knowing anything about Atsilus or whatever it is, and all of a sudden one day all these things should be revealed to us. So this is the, 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 the purpose in a certain sense of the return of prophecy before Mashiach comes. What is the Hira for us? So uh, I just have to finish off, it's getting late, but the Hira is, the Rabbi says in Shaykh Nunala, first of all, that we have to acknowledge and understand that we have to, that, that we, there are prophets around, that are they in Chassidus, that have in our generation, and we have to live, fulfill their Hira's. We have to, in other words, as a preparation for Mashiach, which then prophecy will be abundant to all, and be even on a much higher level, like I mentioned before. But as a preparation to that, we have to understand and acknowledge that this idea of prophecy already exists. And we, there is a Navi, there's a Rebbe, someone that, that the Abisha communicates through him the things that we need to do. And we have to accept his Hidois. And uh, particularly the idea of the Mashiach is coming to prepare for Mashiach. So this is, this is, um, this is what's Negea to us in a, in a, in a practical way. Very